Flip charts are great. They rarely go wrong. And when did you last find yourself without the right connector or adapter for the flip chart in the room? They're spontaneous, they're adaptable, and they get away from that awful feeling of death by PowerPoint. So in this video, I want to give my tips for how to use a flip chart in a meeting. Tip number one is to position the flip chart before you start, ideally before the meeting starts, but certainly before you start speaking. Adjust the height, check the paper, and make sure all of the screws are tight. I've seen flip charts collapse because people haven't checked the screws, so make sure you do all of that before you start. Tip number two is to check the pens before you start. Find a piece of scrap paper and check that the pens work. And the top tip on that is not just to check them for one line or one word, because pens that are pretty much dried out, if they've not been used for a while, will write a few words. Check them by doing a fair amount of scribbling or writing a few words to make sure that they work well. And best of all, top, top tip is to bring your own pre-tested pens with you so that you know that there's going to be a working pen available to you and you're not going to have your presentation spoiled by not having the pen you need. Tip number three, when you can choose your own pens, choose ones that have strong saturated colors that show up well across the length and breadth of a large room. And also choose ones with a broad tip so they draw a nice broad line that's easy to read. My preference is for what are called chisel tipped marker pens rather than bullet tipped marker pens because not only are they capable of drawing a broader line but they also give you the capacity to draw thin lines as well if you want to. Tip number four is can you prepare the flip charts in advance of the meeting so that you waste less time drawing? and then spend more time explaining. Now, it is worth saying that sometimes drawing a good flip chart is part of the theatre, and it's also true that sometimes you can't prepare in advance because what you need to draw or write is driven by the comments in the meeting. And tip number five is if you do pre-prepare flip chart pages, then do them on alternating pages with a blank page between each. That way people can't see while you're working on a page, through that page, what's on the next page. That gets people slightly annoyed. They're trying to read it and they're not concentrated on what you're presenting at the time. So a blank page between pre-prepared pages. And tip number six is if you need to reference pre-prepared flip chart pages, or if you're spending a long time and may need to reference pages you've already done, then sticky notes with a short description or a number on them makes it really easy to find pages in a flip chart. Next, if it's not appropriate to put up a pre-prepared flip chart page, but you want to make sure that you draw a diagram properly or remember key points that uh, you need to present, then be aware that fine pencil does not show over any great distance is not visible to people even in the front row, but you can read it really well, which means you can ink over a pre-prepared diagram or drawing, or if you need to remember six bullet points, then you can read them off fine pencil on the flip chart and nobody will know that they're there. If you want a bit more spontaneity to your drawing and you don't want to pre-prepare it in pencil, the next tip is to rehearse drawing the thing. Draw it a number of times on an ordinary sized piece of paper with pencils and pens. And then when you've got the sense of the size and the scale of different elements of it and how you want to draw it, practice a few times with marker pens on a flip chart. Next, make everything big and bold. Bold text, usually best if you do capitals rather than script. Bright colors, big diagrams, make everything easy for a big audience to read, and even in a small room, do everyone a favor so they don't have to squint or put on their glasses. 
Using a lot of color is important. Use it in a consistent way. But recognize that some people cannot distinguish certain colors. The commonest is red, orange, green color blindness. So don't use colors as the only way to distinguish important concepts. And if it is an important concept and you want to use color to help to distinguish it, then choose colors a long way apart on the spectrum. Ideally, red and blue. There's virtually no red blue color blindness, but there is a lot of red green. And to many people, reds and oranges, oranges and greens are hard to distinguish. Next, take your time. It can feel like you're spending a lot of time writing a line of text that someone has read out and you're keen to get on with the next bit. It feels like a long time, but it really isn't. And secondly, there is a value in terms of projecting authority, confidence, gravitas to taking your time and being deliberately unhurried. And of course, it's important to be legible. So if you rush, you'll make mistakes, you'll make spelling errors and your writing will become hard to read. And by the way, if your writing is naturally hard to read and you can't get it to look easy to read, no matter how slowly you go, then ask someone to write for you, particularly if you don't have a chance to pre-prepare and you need to respond quickly to things that are said in the room. If you're not one of those people who is good at writing in straight lines as you write text, then your pencil is your friend again, but this time in conjunction with a large ruler. Pre-rule lines on pages that you might use to write text on. In fact, you can buy pre-ruled or dotted or grid-based flip chart paper. So think about ordering some of that for your organization. And finally, avoid speaking when you're writing. Firstly, because you're likely to have your back to the meeting. And secondly, because if you're speaking while you're writing, you are much more likely to make spelling errors or even to write the wrong thing. Using a flip chart with confidence and elegance is a skill. It's one you can develop and perfect through practice. These tips will give you the start you need to develop that skill for yourself. Please do give us a thumbs up if you like this video. There's loads more great management courses content to come. So subscribe to our channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any of it. I'll see you in the next video. And in the meantime, keep learning.